Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company taking a look at some of the guns they're going to be selling in their upcoming April of 2018 Premier Firearms Auction. Today we're taking a look at a, another cool example of a manual repeating pistol. This is a type of gun that existed in really a brief period between, well, single-shot manually loaded pistols and the development of the semi-automatic pistol. And in these things, there is, they typically, they, well, they have a magazine in them of some type, and they will fire more than one round, but the user actually has to do the actuating process. And typically, this is in the form of a ring trigger. So the obvious, uh, uh, the best known of these is the, the American one, which is the Volcanic Pistol, which led to, or was an integral part of the development of Winchester lever action rifles. But there were a bunch of these developed in Austria. And this is one of them. So this is an 1884 Schulhoff, uh, manufactured by an Austrian guy named Josef Schulhoff, uh, lived from 1824 until 1890. So he was making these guns right at the end of his life. Um, he apparently was a farmer by profession who got tired of farming and decided he was more interested in firearms design. Got his first firearms patent in 1882. And then this was the slightly developed version of his first pistol design. So this is, I said this is a Model 1884, it is specifically an 1884 pattern gun, Type 2A. Uh, and this designation comes to you from a book by Motz and Schuey um, about the development of Austrian self-loading pistols. Now there were three different versions of this early gun that had different styles of magazine. This particular one has a tube magazine uh, in, well down into the grip. There was also a version that had a clip fed, uh, like a five round end block clip uh, fed in the, well, under the chamber. And there was also one that had a rotary magazine, as well as a few other experimental versions. They only, he only made a total of probably about 50 of these. The highest serial number I'm aware of is 49. And, you know, being experimental prototype pistols, they kind of all are a little bit different. So we have one existing video already on an 1884 Schulhoff. Uh, similar to this one, uh, but not quite the same. So if you're interested in this, definitely make sure to check out that video. There will be a link to it at the end of this one. And uh, anyway, without further ado, why don't I show you the inside of this. The way this works is it is magazine fed. There is a magazine tube that runs all the way along the bottom of the gun up to this loading port. You can go ahead and load the gun through here. Uh, one of the previous versions of this pistol that I took a look at uh, actually had a loading port here in the bottom of the grip. This one is slightly different in that it has this little lockable loading gate in the front. Once you have the magazine full, then this is kind of like an open bolt manually fired pistol. We have a striker held back here, and what happens is when you pull the trigger, you're going to first close the bolt. So here the a cartridge has been loaded in the chamber ready to fire, and the trigger is actually this lever right here. The ring pushes on it and fires. So you can see the striker drop down, that fires the cartridge. And then when I let the trigger forward, the bolt comes backwards, that extracts the cartridge and ejects it. So this would give you the potential for quite rapid fire. And it also allows you to have a reasonably accurate trigger pull. Um, the first version of this, the, the Model 1 1884, or the Model 1884 Type 1, had the trigger built directly into this ring. So when you had the ring all the way back, it automatically fired. The improvement that he made for the Type 2 was to add a separate trigger. So it kind of gives you the effect of a two-stage trigger, where you can close the bolt, you know, chamber the cartridge and have it ready to fire, and then you have a distinct uh, change in the trigger pull and you have to apply more pressure and the trigger stops moving. And then, right there, it actually fires. And that allows you to be a little more accurate with it. So that was the change from the Type 1 to the Type 2. Let's see, then the mechanics of the thing we can actually see really well under this side plate. This plate just nicely lifts off the side of the gun. And now you can see what's actually going on inside. And the mechanism for this is a toggle, very much like the Volcanic and the Winchesters. So this is connected to the bolt, moving forward and back as the bolt moves. This end of the toggle is fixed to the frame, and the trigger bar here has this cam track, 
operating on that peg that forces this toggle up into a horizontal position. And when it's when this toggle bar is in the horizontal position, uh, it locks the breech because forced backward, just like a well, this is basically a knee joint. Um, it doesn't open the lock. What opens the lock is when you let the trigger forward, and there is a trigger return spring right here. When you let the trigger forward, it pushes this peg right there, pushes it down, which causes the toggle to break and the bolt to open. Right like that. You can see the actual trigger mechanism is this bar back here, which is pulling down this sear and allowing this striker to go forward. Schulhoff would continue to develop this pistol after these 1884 patterns. Uh, for one thing, even the 1884s all have little variances in exactly how this works. Because if you don't get the mechanics, the geometry of this quite right, you end up having the shooter's finger uh, contributing a substantial amount of the locking force, and that could be unpleasant to the shooter. Uh, so he changed the, the geometry of the cam path and exactly how this worked through the, the 1884 pattern guns. After that, his next version was the 1887, and in that one he changed this whole mechanism. On the 1887s, instead of having a two-part toggle joint, he had a one-part bar, a, a single piece, that was pushed up and locked directly against the receiver by the trigger. So similar in concept, but different in, in actual mechanics. Ultimately, none of these would really go anywhere. Um, none of these were accepted by the military, and they, they made a few civilian sales, but we're literally talking you know, a, a couple handfuls of guns. Nothing, nothing that would qualify as mass production. These ring trigger guns are really kind of instrumental in the development of early semi-automatic pistols, but they get very little recognition. They're extremely rare guns, um, and it's I like to take every opportunity I get to look at them when I see them. So uh, very cool to get a chance to take a look at another 1884 Schulhoff. If you're interested in having this one yourself, take a look at the description text below. You'll find a link there to Rock Island's catalog page for this guy, and that has their pictures, their description, their provenance, their value estimate, etc. Everything you need to know to place a bid on it right through their website. Thanks for watching.